so uh, we're heading north now up, up Gage Boulevard. Right. Tornado came right over the mound right, right. there. That's an underpass that everybody right. huddled under. And then across and into this neighborhood. Remember, it's a half mile wide, right. so it's right. chewing all of this area up, and then it moved right through here. Right. That when uh, Huntington gas station or whatever was right yeah. about there, wasn't it? Embassy apartments totally yeah. destroyed. Yeah. Uh, right about here is where Albert Lawler and his family were trying to route run the tornado, unfortunately going the wrong direction, and the uh, car died because of the oxygen getting sucked from the environment for thousands of feet, and they were picked up and thrown clear over here, probably 300 yards, and miraculously, you know, minor injury. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> Of course, you never really know how high up they got lifted. It might have just been a few feet, like a, almost a hovercraft, or they might have been spinning around. Like she a, said they were rotating. Were they? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is uh, Twilight Drive, which was really ground zero. The trees have grown up so much over 40 years, it's difficult to see, but the mound's just right there beyond the interstate. Yeah. And, so, and this is what Twilight goes up and around and almost parallels uh, 470, doesn't right. it? Right up here. All these homes were swept off to the slab. Yeah. None of them had basements. Yeah. <clears throat> there was. Uh... And actually, at the day in the day, this was like the new fancy neighborhood. Yeah, this was uh, the growing part of town. Yeah. And uh, these houses, you know, some of them had little <clears throat> hideaway half basements, but for the most part. Uh, they didn't have much, and the people that, uh, you just wonder what it was like when, when that twister came through. If you look through the trees, you might just catch a glimpse of uh, Burnett's Mound and the water tank. This was about the edge of, uh, of where the damage went. It was all, there he is. Should we go say hi to him? Yeah, why not? Looks like he's, uh, he's out more got things. a new truck. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh quite an ordeal we went through up here. I was uh, so-called uh, mayor of the hill when it happened, everything else was gone around here. These homes here were still here, but they were all tore up. I'm trying to remember yours, were you, was yours all right? Ours was livable. Yeah, yeah. And then they came in, uh, insurance company come through and said, you know, hey, you're in good shape, let me go help everybody else. That was in June, okay? Yeah. They came back in August, but when they came back, they just opened up the book. I kept dogs, I kept all kinds of animals here in the garage. Oh, sure, you and were just helping your neighbors. Helping the neighbors. Kind of turned it into a kennel, right? Yeah, we had a kennel, basically. And then uh, I worked for an electric company at the time, and they brought me up a big portable generator. We set it out here in the yard. So here we are up on the hill no lights around and we're the lone lights so of course we had all the guards coming in all the time oh coming in for coffee sure. coming in for sandwiches what have you like that and that's how you became the mayor of the hill and that's why i was mayor of the hill there you go <laughs> so it was uh a devastation totally but you know we had a good time really did the neighbors and everybody that like these folks here these folks stayed and there had been three different families in the other house over there, but the ones that was up here at the time, they stayed. Their houses were livable, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, tell so, about the, when you walked down towards the oh. sunset and <laughs> told that woman you had, what'd you tell her? Oh, man. I went down to the bottom of the hill down here, which was completely tore up. And there's this older lady walking around her thing. And I said, uh, you know, I said, uh, our house is in pretty good shape up there. We got coffee and everything. And she looked at me. Can I use that word? Oh, aren't you a lucky son of a bitch? She turned around, and walked off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, just, but that was a reaction. Yeah. That was just a, a total reaction. It would have been devastating to yeah. go through something like that. Uh, you know, she was just wandering around. Then we found out uh, my wife at that time had a very close friend that moved in here from Leavenworth. Uh, she was, she lived in Leavenworth, my wife did, prior to getting married. Uh, her best friend, one of her best friends, had moved in down on the bottom of the loop down here. We didn't know it. 
they knew where they knew we lived around here someplace but he worked for Hallmark Cards and unfortunately their house got wiped out and they lost a son oh and of course we didn't know anything about it and we read it in the paper uh, so tragedies there it's all gone now basically but the thought still remains <laughs> yeah and there's the mound back up over here back up behind the house and uh, of course all the trees were a lot smaller back then and I was on the back patio and I saw that big black dude coming around that hill and I headed for the basement wife and three kids and we come up, we had a two by four stuck through the roof, the window glass was knocked out in front. Back windows were kind of broke, but we had a house. Looked out the front window there and everything is gone and I could see the highway for the first time. And then realization hit. That was how it went. The worst part about it was the looters. Driving up on the highway, they stop, jump out the cars, run down, grab whatever they could grab. And the police came through one night, and we asked them about the looters. And they said, you got a gun? Well, yeah, we got guns. Get it, load it, holler three times, and if they don't stop, shoot them. Because that's what they deserve. And I looked at the cop, I said, what? That's right. Just drop them where they stand if they don't stop. No boy down the street down here. He took it to heart. He's setting up on what was left of his house. These were all by level and everything went off the top. The subfloor was left. Here he is in his big rocking chair, fifth in one hand, a pistol in the other. <laughs> I and a, and a KBI man that lived across the street, we were going down looking for his release because he had a bunch of handguns in it. And we got down by that guy and he just started shooting. And Merlin looked at me and he said, Tom, we better get back up to the house. Which we did. You fired off some rounds? Oh yeah, he fired off some rounds. In your direction? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's a good that. thing he was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the neighborhood came back pretty quick though, didn't it? Yeah, well, it came back Within real quick. A year, this was yeah. pretty much rebuilt. Rebuilt. Uh, there were just a couple of insurance companies that had trouble. A lot of bad builders came through, but they were caught. Mm -hmm. And uh, people mostly paid attention and, and got everything put back together in pretty good time. How often do you think about the tornado, Tom? Not once, but once in a while on, on the anniversary, or is it something that a memory? All that, the time. It just comes back hard to shake, yeah. huh? All the time. How scared were you? I wasn't really. When you looked up over the mountain, there it was. Yeah, it was coming around the side of the mound. Yeah. Didn't, it didn't come directly over the top, it come around the side, but it just devoured everything within its path. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you remember the sound? Just a big old freight train mm -hmm. rumbling through. We were down in the basement, had a mattress over the top of uh, the kids and, and the wife, and it just, you know, the suction picks you up, drops you back down. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, when we come up, I saw the kitchen roof was still here, you know, and walked through the front door and it was all gone. It, it was tough, it was tough. But uh, all in all, the, the place has grown back. People have come and gone, but it stayed and I've been here forever, 1961.